Um, so basically, 3D, 3D experience can be regarded as the next evolution on the PLM services. Um, two options we have with 3D experience would be the on-premise and on-cloud. Um, the on-premise would be very useful for full deployment of the platform. Um, so providing 41 industry solutions experiences and 235 roles. And the cloud version is a little bit more limited, uh, has 14 industry solutions and experiences and 117 roles. Also the differences uh, between them um, rely on the fact that uh, on one, well on on-premise you do require your own server. Uh, to run the whole network, pretty much like you would run um, some of the previous iterations of the PLM um, packages from Dassault Systems. And on the cloud, uh, a lot of the information is stored precisely on the cloud, although the applications um, are usually installed on your computer. And this brings us now to the Compass. So the 3D experience platform moves completely around the compass. The compass is pretty much the command center from which uh, we control everything. And the compass has four main areas, which are, for example, the social and collaborative apps, the simulation apps, the information intelligent apps, and the 3D modeling apps. Uh, depending on which one you work or what's your area of specialty, um, you would use one of the quadrants more often. So from that command center, effectively, if for example, we go to the 3D quadrant, uh, we're going to have all the roles that um, belong to that quadrant. Um, and the roles are effectively, if you've ever, um, when you use, for example, CATIA, you would have the categories. And from the categories, you go to the workbenches. In this case, what we have instead of categories is the roles. And the roles will vary across uh, several fields, not just engineering, but also the IT department or sales or marketing. Uh, so that's really depending on which area of the company you work on. You can also access to this platform and um, pretty much manage your own area of operations. Um, from there. And the roles will effectively determine um, the access you have to the platform, which type of applications you can use. So from the roles, uh, we go to the applications. So back here, we see the roles. And if you click on any of these roles, you'll see that you have some applications that you can use within those roles. In this case, you see that it one, each one has a, a, a tick on its that all of the roles in that case are active. You can activate or deactivate the roles so that you can see less um, or more applications down here. And basically you get all the applications. In this case, uh, since we're at the 3D or modeling apps, what we're looking is at the applications that you would be able to use with CATIA. Uh, so for example, 3D printing or bent part design or uh, the part design workbench as well, which, well, the equivalent to the part design workbench, but um, in this case it would be called an application. Uh, then we have the menus as well. Uh, so from the menus we can also control several options, like for example the preferences. Um, we can import data and export data out of the uh, network or depending on whether you're working on the cloud or on-premise. Um, and we can also navigate to the um, online platform. So 3D Experience is also divided by having the native platform, which is the one on your computer where you open the application such as the modeling apps. But we also have the uh, online platform, which is where you access some of the other applications and where you can share also information and news with uh, other members of the platform. Then uh, if you've used CATIA before, uh, you will remember that you have the toolbars. In this case, we no longer have the toolbars. What we have is the action bars. So the action bars in this case are completely linked to the bottom of the screen. And we navigate through the action bars by going um, through the tabs. Um, from there, each tab will have some assigned tools uh, that you can access. 
Right, so um, this is just for the short presentation, but now we'll go to demonstrating how the tool works. So first, if we go to the online platform, uh, here we're at something that's called the dashboard. So the dashboards are usually used by the company, for example, to share news or actually you can visualize 3D parts in some of these quadrants in here um, and share them with your colleagues. Um, here's the compass, so this would be our command center here at the top bar. Uh, here we have the search, which I'll explain in more detail in a moment. And here we have the menus. So even though the um, online platform and the physical platform in your computer look very similar, uh, some of these options are going to vary depending on uh, which one are you at the moment. So what we would do if we were to access the uh, physical platform is basically just come here to the quadrant of interest, yeah, and expand your roles. Yeah, in this case, I've chosen all these roles, so these are the roles I, I have activated. And if you want to see the applications that you have um, that are assigned to a particular role, all you have to do is click here, and you can see the applications belonging to that role. So, for example, if we were to check the fluid dynamics engineer uh, here, you have all the applications belonging to the fluid dynamics engineer, or the fluid mechanics analyst, in this case, for example. Um, so, besides the roles, then uh, what we do is directly go to the application. So, since I have all these roles active, these are pretty much all the applications that I can access um, with these roles. So, in this we have, for example, the assembly design, um, so applications that you would be able to see in CATIA, uh, part design, natural sketch, natural shape. Um, imagine and shape, and we have some additional ones in here like uh, live rendering and so on. And apart from those, then we have my favorite apps. So in this case, what usually I do if I have any applications that I'm going to be using often is just I drag them into the uh, favorite apps area. Um, to access um, any of these applications, so in the beginning, whenever you have to install those applications because you're using the software for the first time, let's say you've been assigned some licenses and you have access to the cloud in this case, um, all you have to do to get the uh, applications installed is just click on any of, this, of these ones and you're going to get the option to install it. In my case, since I already have all of these applications installed in my machine, I just have to click them uh, to open the platform. And once we've opened the platform, this is basically how it's going to look. So this is the physical platform. Um, and as you see, the it doesn't look very different from what you get online. So here I can access my 3D modeling apps, for example. And I can go if I want to part design. So if we open part design. Um, this is effectively as is the equivalent of open, opening the part design workbench in Katia V5. And basically, you can start modeling your object in here. So I could create a sketch, for example, in here, if I wanted. Um, and then extrude it. So this, this would be the, the 3D modeling app. However, well, and one of the big advantages of this platform is how easy it is to shift between um, each one of the applications to do whatever I need to do to the part. So from here, for example, I could go straight away to the simulations and perform any particular simulation I wanted, like, um, I don't know, um, it could be the fluid validation, or you could perform a structural validation as well. Uh, additionally, uh, we get the information intelligence apps, which are apps that usually you can access also online. So uh, this, that would be the case, for example, of the 3D dashboards, which is where we share uh, news, for example. So usually if you click there, that's automatically going to open the online platform. If we go to uh, the north quadrant in here, 
we'll get to my social and collaborative apps. And here, for example, is where we can deal with most of the PLM tasks um, uh, in the engineering area. So that's where we can, for example, uh, reserve or unreserve parts um, specifically for the engineers or transfer ownership or change responsibility. Here we can um, do the life cycle of different objects, so change the maturity um, and, well, among other type of operations like duplicating objects and so on. If we go to the menus now in here, uh, we would have the preferences which would be the equivalent of uh, the CATIA tools options. And from here, you can manage most of the options from the platform, uh, whereas that is for the 3D modeling applications or for the PLM access. Um, let's see. We also get here the option to customize. So again, this is a similar option that we used to get in CATIA. And if we want to import content, we go directly here um, or create new content as well. And if we want to save any content, we can do it here as well. Or uh, we can export in order to save directly to your machine instead of saving to the network, yeah, because this is obviously a PLM um, system. If we go to home, home here, we have the common space. So the common space usually determines the credentials. So the company name, the common space would be the project, for example, or the, um, your area, uh, the area in which you're uh, working at the moment. And here you will have the role, which basically determines, um, well, your role within the project. Finally, we get here the, uh, um, all the help. If we go to the user's guides, this gives us uh, access to a very wide uh, user guide online. And from here, we can search pretty much absolutely everything that's embedded within the platform. So any particular tool that you um, need to learn more about, you're going to find it here. So if you, for example, were an analyst, you can find all the options um, belonging to the simulation quadrant on the compass. Or if you are a design engineer, you can find all of the options directly related to 3D modeling. That is the case in the, uh, if we go to the simulation area. Here you can find, for example, all the physics simulations which will give you access to material definition or fluid scenario, fluid model creation, and so on, the different applications that belong to the software. Um, ultimately, uh, we get to use the search. So the search bar in 3D Experience is quite powerful because it will allow you to search for almost anything, whereas that is a person, it is a physical object, it is a file, it is a type of material, anything that you can think of, you can search in here, and you can perform it um, in a simple way just by typing here um, the keywords or just by going to an advanced search as well if you um, require a very specific um, object and you know all the characteristics belonging to that object. So in this case, uh, I have uh, searched for some objects before, but I'm just going to type the name again. Diffuser. And once I click on it, uh, Katia will start, well, or 3D Experience will automatically start searching for it. Now, uh, I'm getting this three options. It could be that you would get a lot of more options because you typed a very um, broad uh, term. In that case, you, we can use the search tags. So search tags, or 6W tags, as they're, as they're called as well, uh, allow you to basically filter the search by knowing, for example, who has modified a part, or when was it, la um, when was it last modified. Yes, yeah? so in this case, we have two that were modified in 2016. So 
as you create content in 3D Experience, this content is indexed. In this case, if you were doing it on the cloud, it's indexed in on the cloud. Otherwise, it'll be indexed uh, to your um, network with the server. Yeah, and uh, basically the tags will allow you to filter that search. And some of these tags are created automatically to make that search a lot easier. Once you have filtered the search using those tags, um, you can just access your content. So in this case, we click here and we open it or explore it. So if you do the explore mode, it allows you to have a preview of the object that you're about to open. So in here, you can visualize the object before you're actually opening it. Um, just if this causes a little bit of confusing, because I've, I've been asked in the past about uh, whether this explore mode is similar to the CATIA, um, when, when you open a part in visualization mode. No, it isn't. This is actually just a preview. In here, I can't actually modify uh, a part or an assembly, but I can visualize all, visualize all the objects belonging uh, to the tree. and actually uh, create filters among them. So in here I can visualize all the objects belonging to this assembly or this object in this case, which is a simulation that I have created. Once you're happy with that, you can either go back um, and search for it and open it directly from there, or you can right click here and there's, there's several options for opening a file, but we can open it from here which will take you directly to the actual application um, and the actual assembly or part that you're working on. Let's wait for a moment. Right, it's quite a big uh, simulation, this one, at the moment. Right, and here we have the simulation. So, interesting thing about this is this actually came from another object I had created, which was the, um, well, as the file is called in here, the car with a diffuser. And after that, there was the simulation. I was just able to create a simulation immediately without uh, much preparation of the model, which is one of the advantages of 3D experiences, how quickly you can go from uh, conceptualizing on a product, yeah, and from the concept actually start working on the detailed design and uh, perform the different uh, design iterations. Um, perform analysis on it, whether there are fluid dynamics or structural analysis or thermal analysis, and then actually simulate how the object is manufactured in, in, on the platform. From there, you can iterate again over and over on the design until you achieve a finished product and you're happy uh, with the result to actually take it down to production. So that uh, pretty much summarizes um, and all the introduction uh, to 3D experience. Um, I'd like now to give the people the opportunity to ask some questions. If you have any questions, just uh, ask them through um, the questions um, section of the um, webinar uh, platform. Any questions? Wait a few more minutes to see if anyone has a question. Right, we have a question here from Benjamin. Um, it says, 
are all CAD functions available within 3D Experience? Yes. Um, so by CAD functions, I assume you mean uh, all the workbenches and applications that you used to have, all, or all the categories you used to have in Katia? Yes. Uh, yeah, um, pretty much um, 3D Experience has CATIA embedded within it. So yes, all the functionality that you had in CATIA uh, has been embedded within 3D Experience. And you can see that um, if we go back to this object in here, um, all the tools that you had in the part design workbench, for example, or generative shape design, you can, all, you can access all of them from here. And you will have all the tools. The difference is how they are arranged um, now. So if we go to the generative shape design, for example, let's stop this for a moment. Uh, where is it? So here you see that I have actually all the tools. The only difference is how they are being, being arranged. Right, let's see, I have now another question from Alex. So, do you need to deploy, in, deploy Innovia as a main PLM platform to enable 3D experience? Uh, one second, Alex, just so I can actually, uh, answer your question properly. Alex, what I'll do about that question, because I don't know for sure 100% in that case, is I'll answer that question uh, by sending you an email, if that's OK. Right. Uh, another question from William. I take it uh, this is the same as JLR's PLM. That's, a quest that's another question I'm afraid I'm going to have to um, come back to you on that one as well. Um, right, I have another question uh, from Will. I believe CAD data can move from CATIA v5 to CATIA v6, but do you have a method for IPLM? Yeah, so uh, what we can do in that case is whenever you have some, whenever you have data on CATIA v5 or CATIA v6 and you want to import that onto 3D Experience, what you can do is save um, or export these objects as a 3D XML file. Yeah? So the 3D XML file will contain absolutely all the data, um, all the saved data and a history of your part, um, all the, if you have any wireframe, all the names of the part bodies and geometrical sets and so on will be imported just as you had them on the other, um, on the other softwares. They, they can be imported onto 3D Experience. And the other way around, actually, because you can export from 3D Experience as a 3D XML um, the, the, the only requirement there, of course, is that the, the service packs of the other softwares are from the same year um, as 3D Experience. But you, if it, it's uh, retroact, so you can actually go, you can import uh, older data into the software, just as you can with the other packages. And actually, just to quickly show you how you would do that, you can import here directly. So if you click on import, you can choose the type of file that you can do. And in this, in this case, that will be 3D XML with authoring. But you can also choose from different options in here. So you can import as step files, um, although the most robust one in that case would be definitely the 3D XML file. Right. Do I have any additional? Oh, let's see. Uh, yes, we have. We have seen already. Um, sorry. 
just one second. Have you seen much usage? Yes. Uh, so there's a few companies already that have implemented the software. They have implemented not the cloud version, however, the on-premise, um, which allows for the full deployment, actually, of the platform. And, well, uh, we've been actually helping with the implementation um, of the package, and it's been working uh, very well so far. Another question, outside of the engineering department, um, for example, marketing, et cetera. Uh, yes, yes, we've seen some use on it, especially because uh, in here, um, this platform allows for internal messaging as well. Um, and there's a lot of interaction between different uh, uh, peers online and so on. So especially, I guess, in, that, in some of those cases would be mostly through the online platform. But as I mentioned before, it is definitely a platform that allows for the full integration of the company into um, the PLM here. So several applications would involve um, uh, tasks uh, related to marketing or the finance department or the sales department as well. Do I have any additional questions? Right, can you export the EBOM to import it into an existing MRP system? Um, well, that's another good question. Yeah, I'm afraid some, some of those questions I'm writing down at the moment, but I'm, I'm definitely going to come back to you uh, guys on those questions later on through email, if that's okay. Right, another one here. Uh, but is it fair to say usage is still 80% engineering? Um, it really depends on the specifics of the business in that case um, and how do you want to deploy it because there's a really wide range of applications that you can apply it to. So in this case, because we're an engineering company, we are showing mostly uh, the engineering applications at the moment, but um, it really depends on the on the um, areas of specialty of your company. Any additional questions? Also, uh, for some of you guys, if you have any additional questions um, regarding 3D experience and you actually want them to be uh, answered with a lot more detail, what you can go is follow, well, you can follow our blog for weekly hints and tips. Uh, that's a usual um, good way of answering some of the questions. But you can actually um, speak to us about I don't know, a custom demonstration or stay informed, or you can actually contact us um, through the blogs as well. Wherever you see a tag that belongs to 3D Experience, for example, you can ask many of the questions through these blogs. Although uh, some of these questions that I didn't manage to answer at the moment, I will answer uh, later on uh, by email. Do I have any additional questions? No? Okay. Well, um, I'd like to thank you all very much for attending this webinar. Um, I hope um, it at least managed to give you a good introduction to 3D experience. And from here, we will keep answering some of the questions you asked. And, uh, well, I certainly hope that you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much.